Now, I cleared the play.js file again because to conclude this quick refresher module, I'll dive into another core concept and that is how to work with asynchronous code. And for that, we first of all have to understand what asynchronous code is. Let's say I set a timer with set timeout, which is a function built into Node.js. There, we define a function that should execute after a certain timer expired. Here, I'll use an arrow function. You could use a named function, whatever you like. The second argument is the timer. Let's say two seconds. You express it in milliseconds, so two seconds are 2000 milliseconds. In there, I'll simply log timer is done. If I now run this file for two seconds, nothing happens and then we see timer is done. Now this is asynchronous code because it doesn't finish immediately. And it would even be async code if we had one milliseconds there. So if it's super fast, it does not happen immediately. In other code snippets, like if we have console log hello and console log hi, these two snippets are synchronous code because they are executed right after each other. And yeah, technically, of course, Node will take some time to execute them, but there is no delay other than your hardware, so to say. And therefore, this is synchronous code. This is async code. Asynchronous because it does not execute or finish immediately. It takes a little time, even if that's super short. And indeed, if I execute this file like this, you see hello and hi before you see timer is done, even though it's super fast. Because Node.js and JavaScript in general does not block your code execution until that is done. Indeed here, it will recognize this so-called callback function. So a function should execute in the future. It should call back later once it is done. So once this timer exp expired here, it will just recognize that and will then immediately move on to the next line and will execute all the synchronous code and then execute your async code once this is done. Which is why we see hello and hi first, even though in our code, timer is done is printed first. And that is a crucial concept you have to understand in JavaScript and especially in Node. And I will come back to that throughout the course because it's so important. Now, when working with that, and I'll increase this to two seconds again to make it even clearer. Then you will see again our sync code runs and then after two seconds this code runs. When working with async code, we get multiple techniques of, uh, well, handling it. The callback function is one, the oldest one, and you'll see it quite a bit, especially in Node.js. There's nothing wrong with it, but you'll face a problem if you have a couple of depending async operations. So here we set the timer. And now let's say I create another function, which I'll name fetch data. And in there, I will also just set a timer because I don't want to set up some database or something like that where we fetch data from. We'll do all that throughout the course. Of course, no worries. So here again, I have another timer in there, which takes like one and a half seconds. And now here in fetch data, I need some way of, uh, well, doing something when this inner timer is done. So here I will actually expect an argument, which I'll name callback, because this argument will be a function I will eventually call in my inner function here once I'm done with the timer. And there I can pass done as a value. Now in the place where I use fetch data, let's say that's inside of this set timeout call. I call fetch data like this. There I now need to pass another call back. And here I will get the text passed by the callback in my function when I execute it. So I will get some text here and I can console log that text. Now this might look confusing. In the end here I'm creating my own function which gets a callback so that I can define a function which should execute once this inner timer is done from some other place. So from this place here, this is the function which effectively is passed in as the callback. And I'm executing that function here. Now, if I save that and I run that, 
takes two seconds, then the timer is done, and then after one and a half seconds, I see done. Now, if we have a couple of nested async calls, as we have here, we go deeper and deeper from a callback perspective. And that is why we also have a feature called promises, which we can use in Node.js. Now, often we'll use third-party packages that already use promises for us. So the syntax I'll show you now is one you rarely have to write on your own. That will be done by the packages behind the scenes. Still nice to know. You create a promise inside of our fetch data function here, let's say, by storing it in a constant or variable, and then by using the new keyword, which you use in JavaScript to create a new object based on a constructor. If constructor functions are something that uh, tells you nothing, check out some basic introduction resource to JavaScript because constructor functions are a core feature in JavaScript. And here you use the promise constructor function, which is built into JavaScript and Node.js. And this actually also takes a callback, which gets two arguments, resolve and reject. You could name them however you want, but these are two functions. And the first one completes the promise successfully. It resolves it successfully. The second one rejects it, which is like throwing an error. You then take your async code and move it into there. And again, you rarely have to write this uh, on your own. Most packages already do that for you and give you the finished promise, which does all the magic behind the scenes, hidden away from you. Here we do it manually. So now in that callback, we have our own function. Set timeout does not give us a promise API, unfortunately. So here we also have to use a callback. But in there, we now know no longer use any callback function we get. I get no argument here in fetch data anymore. Instead here, I resolve done, let's say. So I successfully return the resolve value. Now in fetch data, after defining the promise, we just have to return it. And please note, this is synchronous code. So actually this will be returned immediately after the promise gets created, before the code in the promise is run, which will happen sometime later when we actually call that function and when this timer then completes. So we now return that promise here. And in the place where we call fetch data, we now no longer pass a callback, but we can now use then, which is callable on a promise and we return a promise. And this simply allows us to now define the callback function here, which will execute once the promise is resolved. Now, what is the advantage of that? If we had multiple such promises, so let's say I call fetch data again in there, then I don't have to use then like this, and therefore I would end up with nested callbacks again. But instead, inside of a promise, and the then block is part of a promise, I can just return a new promise, and then add the next then block after the previous one, like this. So now we have a chain of then blocks. This one gets called on the first promise. Then in the then block, I return another promise. And even if that would not give us a promise, inside of a then block, returning it would convert it to a promise that instantly resolves. And then we add another then block, which is now referring to this promise here. And this is more readable than having infinitely nested callbacks. So now if I run that, we see hello, hi, the timer is done, we see done, and we see done again because I'm calling fetch data twice. So this might be difficult to wrap your head around for the first time. We will reuse it throughout this course and then it will become clearer. Again, this code is mostly not written by you, but it is a crucial concept that makes our async code more manageable. There also is another way of managing this, async await, two special keywords you can use in modern JavaScript. And I'll have a separate section about this towards the end of the course. I don't wanna introduce it here because it can actually be more confusing than this syntax here. And I wanna stick to this one to not introduce too many new features at the same time here. 
Async code is something you have to understand though, and if it's not totally clear by now, that is fine though. You will see it throughout the course a bunch because we have a lot of asynchronous events in Node.js and I will explain this multiple times. I'll also explain promises again. I just want to ensure that you have seen this by now and that you then have a chance of understanding this, how it works and how we deal with it.